Hey guys, I'm Eric Rossi and we're in my studio in Los Angeles and I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of the new HG2 MS plugin. While I was creating the presets for this plugin, I was actually doing it while mixing an EP for a really cool artist named Ashley Supa and she and producer Alex Salzman were kind enough to let us use one of the songs for this demo. So I'm actually gonna be able to show you the plugin in use in a real session. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna play through a, a little bit of the song with it on the uh, mix bus. And I'm just gonna show you how it sounds, adjusting some of the parameters and just going through some of the uh, new filter settings. So let me show you a few of the new features and then I'll walk you through some examples of it. So if you remember in the original plugin, we had in the saturation section, there was a low, a flat and a high, and that allowed you to tilt the saturation. And although we could have just added MS and all the cool TMT functions, we wanted to go a lot deeper. So in addition to adding TMT and adding MS functionality and mono maker and stereo width that you find at the bottom of all these Brainworks developed plugins, we actually completely rethought the filter section. So now instead of just being able to tilt the low, high and flat, we actually have five different filters. So we have, go to here, we have a high pass, we have a band pass, we have of course the flat setting, and then we have the band stop, and then we have a low pass. And if you notice, with each of these, you actually get complete control from 20 to 20 of the frequency. So you can now decide where to set your low pass or high pass filter, where you want your band stop, where you want your band pass, and for the filters, for the low pass and high pass, you actually get to control the slope. So you get 6, 12, 18, 26, or 30 dB per octave. So you can completely decide how you want to roll off the low end and where you want that parallel saturation to exist. When you get to the bell shapes, the band pass and the band stop, you get a cue control. So you can go and you can decide exactly how tight you want that boost or cut to be so that you can saturate just one section or you can saturate everything but one section. So that combined with the ability to do this in MS or stereo uh, gives you an incredible amount of flexibility. In fact, it, it took the plugin from something that was, was already flexible and I used on you know, all sorts of sources and mixes to something that now you, you know, I'm really using to dig in and do surgery and fix things and enhance things in a way that wasn't possible with the old plugin. So, a couple other features that were implemented, um, and this one actually uh, is something that Christoph at Brainworks came up with. And when he sent it to me, I it, for, it just hadn't even dawned on me, but it immediately was something that I thought, of course, why didn't we think of that before? And it's, it's brilliant. We have a new solo function, and when you hit solo here, that actually solos only the saturation. So regardless of what's going on with your other controls, your parallel mix, your mono, any of that. This actually solos just the saturation so you can hear exactly what you're doing. And this is particularly useful now that we have these new filters because you can actually listen to exactly what you're saturating and then you unclick it and it's back in and you can control how much of it. So that's another feature that's absolutely critical for making this work in a really intuitive and efficient way. The other things we've added, of course, the density was there. We've moved the calibration down to the bottom. We have Mono Maker that you're probably familiar with from other plugins, and that's really useful for stereo pianos and for things where you want to be able to uh, control 
you know, how much of that is in mono and how much you leave in stereo. And then this right here, you have your stereo width, of course, and then you have a parallel mix and then output. And the output is something that we needed to add because now that you have mid and side, we need a way to control the overall output without affecting that relationship because you wouldn't want to have to go in and individually turn down the output of the mid and the side because you'd be throwing off the balance. So now you can set that and then you can still control your output. And finally, we've got an input control at the top. So you can adjust this with your gain staging. And if your mix starts to creep up a little bit, you can back that off. The last thing is this now has TMT, which you guys are probably familiar with. And TMT allows you to actually select different versions of the plugin or virtual models of it. And the way that works is every component in a piece of analog gear has a tolerance. Every capacitor has a certain tolerance. Every resistor has a certain tolerance. Tubes have tolerances, all of that kind of thing. And so what they've done is, uh, it's, it's really brilliant actually, they've modeled the amount of tolerance that each component has, and then it's allowed them to essentially generate semi-random versions of the emulation that vary in the exact same ways that analog units coming off the assembly line would vary. So that's there and you can select individual uh, channels or you can do random and, and kind of scroll through until you find something that really works. So that's another great feature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how I'm using it in this session. And this instance is actually on the mix bus. And this is using a preset that you guys will get um, with the plugin. It's in there. This is Mix Massive Bus 2. And so here we go. be better if I were all alone I'm feeling all the pressure you're feeling kind of low So now I'm going to loop the chorus and I'm going to show you with and without. So in this case, I'm actually adding excitement, but I'm adding more to the sides. So what you can hear is you can hear that the sides are getting a little bit brighter. You're getting some of that air, which makes the mix feel wider and a little bit more expansive. And I'm adding saturation to the mid as well, but a little bit more of it and a little bit less of the air. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solo and you can hear what I'm adding. So this is a mid section that is so, uh, soloing just the saturation. <laughs> And you can actually hear as I add more. And then this is what I'm adding to the sides. Now, if I wanted to, I could go with a high pass filter. And now, as you'll hear, completely control the frequency selection. Let's go down to uh, 60 dB per octave. And you'll hear as I bring this up in the mix, how things get brighter on the sides. And also with this, I have my mono maker set to 65. So that means that all the sub 
is now moved to the center. And there shouldn't be a lot in the sides, but this just makes sure that everything's nice and tight. And you can, of course, set that wherever you want. I'm also adding a small amount of stereo width, and I back the density off slightly. And density is really useful uh, on this and the original plugin. What it does is it changes the relationship of the input and the output. So as you back off density, it reduces the input while compensating at the output. And that's really useful uh, in a couple scenarios. One is on your mix bus, if you have uh, your plugins on early, often as your mix progresses, things get a little bit louder and the levels get a little bit hotter. And so you're pushing into it more. And the HD2, because of the way it saturates, is pretty sensitive to that. So this allows you to, at any point or towards the end of your mix, decide how hard you wanna be hitting. So you can kind of back off a little bit. Another place that's useful is for, say, drums. Because the density essentially acts as a dynamics control, you can control your peaks by pushing the density or, or pulling it back. All right, so one of the other uh, cool things about adding the solo function, and this is something that initially I hadn't thought of, but while making presets dawned on me, is that presets can be saved with solo active, which means you're only hearing the saturation. So what I've done is I've actually gone through and created presets that have effects. Uh, in the name. And what that means is that the solo will be on and everything else is turned down. So what it allows you to do is use the HG2MS essentially as a, a set of filters. Rather than just filtering the saturation, you can filter the whole signal now and you can automate that in cool ways. So, so let me show you what I'm doing with that. And you can, of course, do that with high pass as well. Uh, with your band pass and with any of the filters. With full controller of the cue. And of course, all that's fully automatable. So uh, what's great about that is that it's not just a set of filters, but it's the saturation section. So you're getting this really cool saturated tube automatable filter. And so it's great for uh, swells, for builds, um, especially for electronic music and for breakdowns, things like that, or just creating effects. So it's a whole new way to use the HG2 in a creative way rather than just enhancing you know, a signal or enhancing your mix. And I'll show you an example of how I use that in this mix. So Alex had created a really cool vocal effect uh, for one section here. It sounds like this. So obviously it's heavily processed and filtered. And so I actually recreated that uh, with the HG2 to recreate that with saturation. So here's what the original sounded like uh, with no processing. So I was actually able to create that filtered sort of telephony effect that was also saturated to give it this really cool vibe just using the HG2. So one of the other really cool things about having MS is that uh, you can control the focus of things. And uh, a good example of that is uh, piano. A lot of times stereo pianos, whether they're recorded or whether they're uh, virtual instruments that are made from samples, they're often slightly out of phase so that what happens is they sound really wide in stereo, but then they collapse in mono. And one of the things I often do is try to bring that into focus. And usually I have to use an MSEQ, but now with the HG2, I can actually do that right in this plugin. And let me show you that. So let me show you what the, the piano sounds like on its own originally. So what happens is if I fold that down to mono, 
we lose a lot of that and we lose a lot of the energy. And depending on the arrangement, sometimes that just doesn't work, especially the singer songwriter thing. You really need to keep the piano uh, focused and keep it so that it still has the presence it needs and the energy that it needs, you know, even in mono. So what I've done here is I'm able to control the mid and side information, uh, narrow the piano, but I can control the frequency range that I narrow and doing that by using the saturation differently in the mid and side. Let me show you what that sounds like. So what I'm doing is I'm actually reducing the sides a bit, but then I'm adding some of the energy back that's lost using saturation. I can add as much or as little as I want, and I can use that in combination with the mono maker, which will fully make everything below this frequency mono. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing the bottom in, and I'm bringing in the sides in it all together a little bit, but adding some of the energy back. So in the context of the mix, I don't lose anything, but now it's more mono compatible. So let me play in the mix. So, and that's actually a preset in there as well called Piano Focus. And how dramatic that is depends how out of focus the piano is. But when you are using it in one of your tracks, you can adjust that with the mono maker and by adjusting the output here of your uh, side section. And so you can kind of find exactly the happy medium that gets you what you need. So that's compatible both in stereo and uh, if you fold down in mono. So one of the other things I wanted to show you is uh, a cool technique that I've been using and that is on room mics. And oftentimes when I have a, a live recording of drums and I have a room mic, I really want to smash the room mic, but what happens is you get this really nasty, swirly madness that happens with the cymbals. It can get be really harsh. Someone hits a crash and it's just out of control. So I'm actually using the HG2MS to control what frequencies are being processed and what are not. So let me show you, let me play you these drums. Okay, so in there, I've got this drum room mic. And here's what it sounds like with nothing on it. Now I wanna saturate it, but I don't wanna bring up all those cymbals. So if I were saturating it in a standard fashion, so here's on flat, meaning I'm saturating everything. Here's what it sounds like. And if I go to a chorus, listen what happens when the crash hits. It kind of overtakes everything. So what I've done is I've gone in and using the solo function, I've gone in and I've found exactly where those nasty areas are. So I found the section that I don't want to saturate. And then I've moved over to band stop and now I'm actually saturating everything but that section. And let me play the difference. So as you can hear, everything gets saturated and smashed, which is what I'm looking for, except the symbols, which stay very close to what they were in the unsaturated signal. So let me play it for you without that band setting and in a flat mode where I'm saturating everything. I'll go back and forth. Listen to the cymbals. So once again, with the band reject in.
So I've effectively been able to go in, saturate everything but that. And so now I can bring it up louder in my mix and I can really get a nice, huge room sound without all that swirliness and with all that phase issue. So uh, finally, this is on the original plugin, but there is uh, some confusion with some people about how to use the density. So I wanna show you uh, how it can be used to control dynamics. So in this case, I have this uh, on my drum bus, so I'll play it for you and watch the peaks here. So see where the peaks are hitting and watch what happens when I increase or decrease the density. So as you can see, just by pushing the density or backing it off, I'm actually reducing my peaks, my transients by, you know, seven, eight dB without losing much punch at all. I mean, it still sounds big and it still sounds like it's hitting hard. So what that means is that you're having to hit a limiter or a compressor after that much less uh, than you would without it. So you're, you're actually going to be getting less of the pumping and you're getting uh, to keep a lot of the, the punch so it sounds like you're allowing them to be more dynamic, but in reality, you're just letting the tubes do the work and saturate those transients in a way that feels a lot more natural than it would uh, if you were hitting a compressor. So that's a really, really useful tool. Uh, if you find yourself, you know, uh, watching your meter on say a limiter and you're, you're hitting it a little harder than you want, you can go in and just push the density up slightly on the HG2 and that's going to take some of the workload off of any dynamics processing you have after it downstream, which usually means uh, a more open, punchier mix. So densities are really, really uh, important and useful tool. On the other side of that is if you find yourself, um, you know, later on in a mix, and again, you're you find that things are saturating a bit too much and, and you're hitting it too hard, just back off the density slightly, and what'll happen is it'll allow the dynamics to come through a little bit more. And of course, that means you're going to be hitting your limiter a little bit harder, but you can use that to find a balance between the two to get the most transparent result. So uh, don't overlook the density. That is a really, really useful uh, feature on both the new and the original plugin. So one last feature that uh, I haven't talked about yet is something that people have been asking for, and that is uh, an auto gain compensation. And we talked about it a lot in the forums and, and with people. And because of the way that the pentode and triode uh, curves saturate, it's not actually possible to do uh, a one-to-one. -one. But what we did do is we added the ability to kind of have a rough compensation. And what you do is you just shift or whatever your alt button is and now uh, and click. And now when you turn up the pentode or the triode, you can see that it's compensating at the output. And, and I'll, I'll play that for you so you can hear what it's doing. As you can hear, as you get to the more extreme settings in either way, uh, you either lose volume or, or you gain a little bit. And that's just because of the uh, both the tube and the potentiometer uh, curves. So it's not gonna be a complete one-to-one, -one, but it really does let you get um, a rough idea of what you're adding without it getting much louder. And it also means that you can try some extreme settings without you know blowing your speakers up so you can really crank the pentode really crank the triode without things getting super loud and constantly having to dive for the output knob which of course on the, the hardware is easy but when you have a mouse and you can only click one thing at a time it makes it a little more difficult so we have added that and i know that's going to make a lot of people happy so that's been a quick walkthrough of the new hg2 ms and as you guys explore it, I'm sure you're going to find a ton of new uses for it and find that it does a lot more than just give you MS functionality, but lets you dive really deep with uh, your mixes, your masters, and even sound design. So have fun with it, and I uh, can't wait to hear what you guys create with it.